and they have their own different approaches to do so. In the Islamic teachings, the discussion about mercy and what are the types of mercy and what is the meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful towards his servants is one of the important discussions, especially because it is related to different angles of religiosity. Because from the mercy of Allah, the razzaqiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving rest and sustenance to people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving, he is al he forgives people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creator. All these attributes of Allah falls under the main category which is mercy. Then it is very important to understand the mercy of Allah, the types of mercy, and also how this mercy is manifested in the life of Abdul Bayt especially in the life of Abi Abdullah al Hussein First of all, as you know, and it is famous in the books of Tafsir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two types of mercy. The general mercy and special mercy, in particular mercy. The general mercy, as we recite in Surah Al Hamdan, which is the first verse of this surah, is Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Because for Surah Al Hamd, all ulama agree that the Bismillah is a part of Surah. So Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, what is the Rahman and what is Rahim? So they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy, but He has two types of mercy. One type is general, that encompasses all people, believers or non believers, but there is a special mercy for those who believe in Him. So, the na'ma and the bounty of paradise, the bounty of guidance, the, the bounty of spirituality, the fact that we can talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have conversation, do munajat and supplication, this is one of the bounties that is special for moments for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is a general mercy of Allah who includes all people on the earth. It is like sunshine. The sun shines on everything. No matter this person is Muslim or Kafir, this is the house of Muslim or Kafir. So the general mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is universal for all. Then, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distribute these ni'mas among people? As you know, we have a verse in Quran that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about rizq and sustenance of people, He said, Allah distributed money, wealth, and sustenance among people. So if somebody is poor, he is doing his best to earn money, but he cannot. You should not blame him. Because after all, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distributed. And Allah distributed this wealth among Muslim and Kafir, Mu'min, believer, and unbeliever. Then it is not, there is no wonder that you can see a mu'min who is poor and a kafir, an unbeliever who is rich, and vice versa. But some of you may ask yourself, we have a narration that at dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. The dunya and this physical world is like prison for mu'min and believers and is like paradise for unbeliever, for the one who is not on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day, there was an unbeliever, he was poor, and he saw Imam Hassan alayhi salam. He saw the 
that Imam Hassan is riding a very good and expensive horse and he has a good clothes on him. This unbeliever knew religion of Islam and he asked the Imam, oh, Imam in your narrations, in your teachings, we heard that you say at Dunya Sayyidina Mu'min, the Dunya is the prison of Mu'min. What happened that I am unbeliever and the Dunya I am poor? And you are a believer and you are rich. Why you say at dunya sin no moment? So how prison is this for you? You are living good life, mashallah. Muhammad said, Do you know what is the secret of that? The secret is that no matter how much bounties and nikmah and blessings the moment person has in this world, in comparison to what he is going to gain in paradise, this is prison for him. And for Kafir, no matter how much difficulty he is facing in this world, in comparison to the punishment he is getting in hellfire, this is paradise for him. Then Imam alayhi salam says, the meaning of this hadith is this. So the bounty of Allah is general. The mercy of Allah is general for all mu'min and Kafir. Sometimes you see a mu'min person and Imam like Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam. Because of the difficult situation Muslims had at his time, he was living like a poor person. But at the times of, for example, Imam Bakr alayhi salam and Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, they, because they weren't they didn't take any position in politics and they were not leaders of their time and of course and also the standard of living was high at the time of Imam Bagr and Imam Sadiq alayhi salam so the life of Imams also were different based on their own time so we have a hadith you have to live based on the average life of your own time and age so Imam Hassan also answered to this man that oh, the mercy of Allah is general. Sometimes you see an unbeliever is rich, sometimes you see a woman is rich. But how many verses and what types of mercy are mentioned in the Holy Quran? First of all, let me mention some of the verses that you can get a general environment of the verses of Quran related to mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, Allah promised that He is not going to waste the good deeds of anyone. The ihsan, charity, and good deeds, and good behavior that you have towards your mu'min brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to waste it. Inna Allah Allah yudhi wa ajra al-Muslim Allah do not waste, does not waste the reward for those who help others, for those who have ihsan. Exactly one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which refers to His mercy is Muqsin. We sometimes in du'as recite Ya Muqsin wa haqq al-Hasan Ya Qadim al-Ihsan wa haqq al-Muslim So one of the Attributes of Allah self is Muqsan. So Allah Himself is merciful and He likes mercy. Inna Allah Allah yudhi wa ajra al-Muqsani. And in Surah Al-Rahman, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the bounties and ni'mas and blessings in paradise, He says, فَبَعَيَّعَ هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ فَبَعَيَّعَ عَلَىٰ يَرَبِّكُمْ مَا تُكَذِّبُمْ Is the response and reflection and outcome of good deeds and doing good to other people other than Ihsan it means that when you did good things in your life so the reflection will be paradise reflection will be the Ihsan and goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the Ihsan and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are many narrations. Actually, you can write in an encyclopedia about mercy of Allah. 
There is a hadith that when you are asking and you are supplicating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not ask him to behave with you with his justice. Because no one can tolerate the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask him for his mercy. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, send your mercy to me. Oh Allah, bless me. Yes, justice of Allah is a good thing, but not for mu'mini. Because everyone who asks for justice will get a stuck. There is a hadith that uh, mentioned in the day of judgment, when all people and mu'mineen are entering paradise, one pious person who is proud of his own deeds and says, you know, the whole life I worship, I didn't commit any sin. When he is entering paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him and says, Enter paradise because of my mercy. When this man hears this, he stops. He says, Oh Allah, what happened? You know, in all my life I worship, I didn't commit any sin. So why because of your mercy? This is my right. I deserve to go to paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angel, stop him. He has to go through check. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, reckon his amount and compare it to one ni'mah that I gave him. To one bounty. Then they saw whole life he worshipped but is not equal even to one of the names and blessings of Allah. The name of health, the name of having healthy mind, healthy body, good parents, good children, good job. Even this is not equal to one of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So never ask for the justice, ask always for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. visited a companion of him who was ill and Imam alayhi salam said how do you feel, what happened, why you are ill, is there anything I can help you? He said oh Imam alhamdulillah I'm fine, I'm happy with this illness because this is something that I myself asked from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam said how do you ask why? He said because I saw that I committed some sins when I was young so I saw that I cannot tolerate the punishment of Allah in hereafter. So I said, oh Allah, whatever you want to punish me, instead of that punishment, punish me in this world Allah. with illness, with difficulty. And one of them said, what kind of supplication and prayer is this? Why don't you ask mercy of Allah? Allah. The same God that can punish, the same God can forgive, forgive you. Allah. So, it is mentioned that do not ask justice of Allah, do not ask punishment. Oh Allah, punishment in this world. No, forgive me because you can forgive. But with the niqya, with the sincere intention. But there are some mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we consider them as mercy, but actually they are not mercy. It is called in Arabic literature and verses of Quran, it is called istidraj. Estedraj means to give time to people so they do whatever they want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Qalam says, We give them time while they do not know what's going on to them. They think that they are good people. They think that, you see, nothing is going to happen to us. We are good. Even unfortunately among some Muslim people, when they have good life, they say, Alhamdulillah, you know, I do not fast, I do not pray, but I have good life, Alhamdulillah, Allah is merciful. <coughs> yes, Allah is merciful, but this is not the way that a Muslim should live. You have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you know maybe this is an opportunity, this is the time that Allah gave you to test you. This is a trial. Then, then Imam Hussein alayhi salam, In one of his, his sentences, in a du'a says, Oh Allah, do not test me with giving time.
So I continue to be a bad person. Indeed, Imam wants to teach us. Oh Allah, do not test me with istidraj, means with giving time and opportunity. So I continue my bad deeds. The next discussion now, let's just examine one of the examples of mercy to see what are the muhsan. We spoke about mercy, rahmah, and ihsan, al jazaul ihsan, illa ihsan. One of the best examples of muhsan, the one, those who are charitable, those who are supportive, those who are helpful to their community, is in Surah Al Yusuf. In Surah Al Yusuf, you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions five times the word Muhsaneen. And Prophet Yusuf was one of the Muhsaneen, was one of those who was helpful and supportive and charitable to the community. The first verse is, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فلما بلغ أشده آتيناه حكما وعلما وكذلك نجد المحسنين When Prophet Yusuf reached to the age of maturity he gave him knowledge and wisdom وكذلك نجد المحسنين This is how we reward the محسن people Another, the next verse was when those two persons in the Prison, they were friends of Prophet Yusuf, they came to him and said, We want you to interpret our dreams. We see you a good person, the one who is always trying to do good to other people. The next verse, We gave him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we gave Yusuf alayhi salam the power and authority on the earth and this is how we deal with good doers, with Muhsaneen. But why Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam was called a Muhsan? As you know, uh, because Prophet Yusuf, we don't have many narrations that what was his demeanor, what was his conduct with people. Just a short example from the verses of Quran. What happened when the king of the Egypt saw in dream that seven thin cows are eating seven fat cows? He sent someone to prison and said, go and ask Yusuf what is the interpretation of this dream. In that situation, if Prophet Yusuf was looking for his own interest, he said, no, this is not acceptable. You are keeping me in prison. You are asking me something. First, just leave me free. Then I will answer your question. But Prophet Yusuf did not ask any of them. He said, what is your question? They said, we are looking for the interpretation of this dream. Prophet Yusuf said, there will be a drought in your country, so we have to keep your sustenance for seven years to spend it in the drought years. They went to the Hadith and the king of the Egypt and he said, who is this man? Bring him to me. Then Prophet Yusuf said, no, I won't come out of prison. First, you have to tell me why you kept me for seven years in prison. I was innocent. This is the quality of being Muslim, being good doer. Sometimes we want to do something good for our community to say, no, first you have to listen to me, first you have to do this based on my understanding, based on my decision, then I will help, then I will do this for you, then I will cooperate. Prophet Yusuf said, no, if it is good for the community, let me tell them, let me help them. So Prophet Yusuf was one of the best examples of Muhsani. Now, what are the points that we need to take into consideration in regard with being merciful and being helpful to our community and being a good doer in regard with our community? Because as I said, we try 
to read the moral qualities in order to reach to a state of moderation and equilibrium. Because sometimes we try to do something good, but because we don't know how, you see, we are dragged to somewhere that the, the results of that good action and charity will be fruitless for the community. Many, many examples you can see around you. First of all, the first thing is we have to see not always, we should not always be obsessed with the short-term charities. Rather, we have to think about long-term goodnesses and charities that can help our community for a long time. As you know, this is a famous expression, they say Sadaqa Jariya. Sadaqa Jariya means the charity that will remain even after your death. Because this is based on a hadith that when somebody dies, the letter and the record of his deeds will stop. Except for three or four things. One is a good and solid and pious child, if remains after him. The Quran or a book that a person wrote for the benefit of the community, the masjid they built, and anything that continues. Man sanna sunnatan hasana falahu ajru man amil A person who make a good way of life, a good custom among society, a good akhlaq in this society, for example, you see, in one community, they were not reading, for example, Dua of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam after salah. Recite salawat. This person comes and teaches them, you know, brother, this Dua is Mustahab, this is good if you recite after salah. You see, in that masjid, they start to recite this Dua. Until that du'a is recited by that community, this person will get salah, will get a share from that good teaching he had to that community. If they make a masjid, anyone who prays in that masjid, if they make a school, anyone who is studying in that school, Sadaqa Jariya means something that continues. And there is another hadith, Something that is going to be perished, to be forgotten, is little. Even though it seems a lot. And something that is going to remain and eternal, it is too much. Even though it, is, it seems little. So your worship, anything that you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do it with a, with a good intention, this will remain. Everything will perish except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that is attributed to Allah or has any relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain. If you do a good action because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why it remains? Because Allah remains. Allah is eternal. And anything is done for dunya, will perish with dunya. The next issue that also derived from the narrations of Ahlul Bayt about Ihsan is the hadith from our holy Imam Imam Raza It is a long hadith but there are some sentences that is related to our discussion tonight. Imam alayhi salam says, لا يتم عقل بإن مسلم حتى تكون في عشر قصر. The Muslims, the Muslim reason and intellect is not complete until these ten qualities is completed in his soul. What are those qualities? Shall I read some of them which are related to our discussion tonight? Imam alayhi salam says, Al khayru min hu ma'amun. The goodness is expected from him. It means goodness, help, and support is expected from him. 
For example, when you're going to a company or you, you have a need and you want to ask someone, there are some people that you have always good hope about them. You say, yes, let's, let me first call him. He solved, for example, the problem of that one and the other one. He's a good person. So al khayru min humamun. They are famous in their community as being good people and good doers. Those who always try to support other people and solve their problem. Al khayru min humamun. Wa shabru min humamun. And evilness and bad qualities are not expected from them. So people are immune from their bad qualities. They do not annoy anyone. They do not bother anyone. But this is very important. Yes, When they are doing something good to other people, some, so, sorry, when somebody is doing good to them, is helping them or giving a gift to them, they consider it a lot. They don't say, no, this is nothing. For example, when a friend comes to his house and brings a gift, they say it is a lot. Even, even though it is, for example, a box of dates or Sweet. They appreciate it. They say this is a lot to me. Thank you very much. But when they do something good to people, they consider it little. They say, I did nothing. Even though they give a lot, even though they support the community a lot. This is the quality of being open and reasonable among the movement. And this is the hadith which I mentioned. And what the last part of hadith is very important. Imam alayhi salam says, the moment person, whenever he sees someone, he says he is better than me. He never considers himself the better person. Imam alayhi salam says, why the moment is like this? Because if that person's appearance is good, he says, yes, he is better than me. If that person's appearance is not good, he doesn't look like a good Muslim. He says to himself, the moment says, maybe his goodness is hidden. Maybe he has a good quality in his heart that I do not have. Maybe Allah loves him more than me, although his appearance is not like a good Muslim. So Imam says, whoever he sees, he says, Then, now we examine this quality of being merciful and supportive and doing good to our communities and other people in the life of Imam Hussein <laughs> alayhi salam. Yes, maybe 
in some of our countries, our Mu'min brothers are living not in a very good financial situation, but at least they are living in a religious environment. At least they don't have problem with their kids. They don't have problem with their youth going to school. This is a bounty and the ni'mah that unfortunately we are deprived. How much do we think about the future of our generation here? How much do we think to have a long-term objectives for our youth and generation? How many good schools, religious schools, academic schools do we have which matches the standard? I don't know whether you can name even one. Brothers and sisters, our youth and generation, like it or dislike it, are part of this society and are children of this country. So you have to think about their future, about their religiosity. So if you do not invest on their future, you see that in our generation the problem that we have will be multiplied. The problem of education, the problem of community, the problem of depression, the problem of marriage, all of them will be multiplied. Why? Because we did not decide fundamentally for our generation. Every time we wanted to spend something, no, alhamdulillah, everyone here is rich. Okay, being rich is not the question. What do you know what is going on for the generation after you, for the children? Are they living in a religious environment? Do they have religious friends? Just with one day Sunday school and madrasa, we cannot make them good Muslims. Inshallah they will be good Muslims. Is it Allah who guides people? But we have also some duties. So when you think about those people, yes there are poor, some refugees, it is good. But first think about these, our youth. If you want to understand them, they are also poor. If you do not work for them, if you do not plan for them, for life there. Imam Hussain alayhi salam. In a hadith said, one poor man came to Imam alayhi salam and said, Ya Abu Abdullah, I have some uh, money to give somebody, I borrow some money I cannot give back. I would be happy if you help me. Imam alayhi salam said, Oh my Arab brother, as you heard, there is a saying that says, Al ma'ruf al ma'rifa. <coughs> money and help and support is based on your merit. This is merit based. So, I want to ask you some questions. If you answer me, inshallah I will help you. This man said, Ya, ya Abna Rasulullah, I am, you know, illiterate Bedouin, I am a illiterate person. Someone like you wants to ask me a question. Okay, no problem, but ask me. If I did not know, I will learn from you. Imam alayhi salam asked him some questions. Imam said, Ayyul a'mal afzal. What is the best deed for a person to do? The man said, فَقَالَ الْأَعْرَابِ أَلِ إِمَانُ بِاللَّهِ He said, the faith and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best action. فَقَالَ الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ فَمَنْ نَجَاتْ مِنَ الْمَهْلَكَ What is the rescue and relief from danger and from being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَقَالَ الْأَعْرَابِ أَثْتَبَحُ بِاللَّهِ To trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have tawakkul. فَقَالَ الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ فَمَا يُزِينُ الرَّجُوعُ What makes, what is the beauty of man and Muslim? The man said, عِلْمٌ مَعَهُ حِلْمٌ If somebody has knowledge, with patience, with forbearance. Then Imam alayhi salam said, فَإِنْ أَخْدَعَهُ ذَلِكَ If this person did not have knowledge, what is the best thing for him? He said, مَالُ مَعَهُ مُرُبَّةً To have money, at least he doesn't have knowledge, 
So he tries in doing his best to earn money and spend it for the good of society. To have money with justice. If he doesn't have money, the man said, Poverty with patience. If he doesn't have money, if he doesn't have knowledge, at least he can be a poor person, but at the same time patient and pleased and submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Imam alayhi salam said, فَإِنْ أَخْدَعَهُ ذَلِكُ If somebody neither have knowledge, nor money, nor sabr and patience, what is the best thing for him? He said, oh Imam, فَالصَّائِقَةٌ تَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءَ وَتُحْرِقُهُ If such a person exists, it is better a thunder comes from the sky and burns him. So this person who doesn't have money and knowledge and patience, this person should not exist on this world. He cannot live in it. فَذَاهِكَ الْحُسَيْنِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Imam Hussain alayhi salam smiled and said, وَرَمَا بِالصُّبَّةٍ إِلَيْ فِيهَا أَلْفُ الْمِنَارِ and threw a money container with 1,000 dinar. And then Arabi took that bounty from Imam alayhi salam and said, Allah a'lam ha'i suya jahlu risal. Surely Allah knows in which family and which household put the risal and prophecy. Brothers and sisters, some of our exam and mercies and supports should be merit based. Yes, for short term, for short term charities, we have to think for whole community, but we have also to have some charities for those who are studying well, for some of our youth who can continue in a better education to support them. If we see there is a moment, he is able to go to university. He is a clever, we have to support them. Imam alayhi salam said, al ma'roof but that will not The charity and ihsan is based on merit. Inshallah, while I am reciting the next hadith, brothers wanted uh, have the, had the program of uh, fundraising tonight. Inshallah, may Allah accept from all of you, and inshallah, accept from all Muslims. May Allah give barakah and blessing for those who help in any possible way, with their money, with their health, with their food, anything that they can do. This is the, uh, actually I say the table of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Everything brings anything he can on the table to make the majalis of Imam Hussain alayhi salam better and better inshallah. Recite the salawah. <laughs> Maybe you can help him with money, maybe you can, but you can help him with time. 
or you have good reputation in your community, you can, can ask somebody else. Or you know some, someone in a company, in a bank, that can help him. So Imam salam says, these hawa'ij and requests of your mu'min friends are the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not reject them. But Imam Hussain alayhi salam, what was his conduct with his servant, Safi? Imam Hussain alayhi salam had a servant, his name was Safi. As you know, those ulama and those people whose family name are Safi, like for example in Iran we have Ayatollah Safi, their name is taken from this servant of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Safi. One, and he was working in one of the gardens of Imam Hussain alayhi salam around Medina. One day, the narration says, فَزَحَ فَزَحَ يَوْمًا مَا أَسْحَابِهِ إِلَى بُسْتَانِهِ وَكَانَ فِي ذَلِكَ الْبُسْتَانِ غُلَامٌ لَهُ غُلَامٌ لَهُ إِسْمُهُ صَافِي Imam alayhi salam one day decided to go by companions, with his companions to his garden, to sit and have some fruit and spend some time. So this is a wrong impression that we have that Imams always were in Sajjada. They had good time with their friends, they were sharing their time with their friends, with their family. They went to a Bustan and a garden of Imam alayhi salam. When Imam alayhi salam approached the garden, his garden, saw that this servant of him is eating food. فَنَذَرَ الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ وَجَلَسَ إِنْدَ نَخْلَةٍ مُسْتَقِلًا لَا يَرَى Imam Hussain alayhi salam stopped and sat beside that power watching him what is he doing, what is this man doing. Imam saw that فَكَانَ يَرْفَعُ الْرَغِيفِ فَيَرْمَا بِنِسْفِهِ إِلَى الْكَلُبِ وَيَأْكُلُ نِسْفَهُ الْآخَرِ Imam saw that this servant of him is eating half of the food and, and throwing half of it to a dog that was also in that garden. So he was sharing his food with an animal. When he finished his food, he said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma fir li wa fir li sayyidi wa barik lahu kama barakta ala abawai. Rahmatika ya arham al He said, Oh Allah, forgive me and forgive my master Imam Hussain and give barakah and blessing to him like the blessing that you had given to his fathers means Amirul Mu'mineen and Rasulullah فَقَامَ الْحُسَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ وَقَالَ يَا صَحْبِي Imam alayhi salam then stood up and approached the man and said Ya Safi called him O Safi فَقَالَ الْقُلَامُ فَزَعَنْ وَقَالَ يَا سَيِّدِي وَسَيِّدَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِنِّي مَا رَأِيْتُكَ فَعْفُ عَنِّي The Quran just suddenly stood up and said Oh Imam sorry I didn't see you I didn't know you, you arrived in the garden فَقَالَ الْحُسَيْنِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ اِجْعَلْنِي فِي حِلِّهِ Please forgive me, I didn't want to disturb you لَأَنِّي Why forgive me? لَأَنِّي دَخَلْتُ بُسْتَانَكَ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِي because I arrived your garden without your permission. Allah said, Safi bi fazlika ya sayyidi taqoolu haza. The Safi said, oh, oh Imam, why do you say this? This is your generosity. Imam alayhi salam said, Ra'ayn to katar me, I saw that you are sharing your food with an animal, with that dog. Faqal al-Qulam, inna haza al-kalb yanzul ilayya ina aqo. This animal is watching me. So I am shy to eat and not to share my food with an animal that is watching me. I am your servant. And this is also your dog protecting your garden. I am your servant and this is your dog. So we share something. It means both of us working for same master, for same Imam alayhi salam. So we have to eat 
your risk and from your food that you have provided us together. This is a you know, lesson for us from this servant of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Brothers and sisters, wherever we are, whoever we are, we should look at us like the servants of the same master. Not different people. We have to say, this is my brother. Although maybe we have disagreements, but this is the servant of the same master. Fabachar Hussein, Imam alayhi salam started crying. You are free for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the servant said, oh, oh Imam, if you free me, but I want to stay in this garden and work for you forever. And when you give me this garden to be mine, I want to use this garden for the benefit of your followers and your ashab. But one day, the Ashura came. Imam every moment of his life, every moment that took place from the night of Ashura, is a lesson and each of them breaks the heart. Imam alayhi salam also had some servants in his camp. One of them was John. He was the Qulam of Abiza. On the night of Ashura, we have the narration that when Imam Hussain alayhi salam was in the khayma and in the tent, this Qulam and this servant was making the sword of Imam alayhi salam sharp, was sharpening the board, the sword of Imam alayhi salam. And Imam alayhi salam was looking at this sword and reciting, Ya Dar Uffil Laka Min Khalil. O dunya, O world, what invaluable you are, what prices you are. There is no value for you. Imam Sajjad alayhi salam says, I was in the next tent to my father. I heard this poem that in my father is reciting, O dunya, you are unfaithful dunya. He said, I heard and I wanted to cry, but I stopped myself. I said, let me not to cry loudly, maybe Auntie Zainab will hear. But suddenly I saw Auntie Zainab also heard the poem of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. She ran toward the tent of Abi Abdullah and said, Oh, brother, are you really losing your hope? Are you really preparing yourself for death? Muhammad salam said, What is the other choice for the one who doesn't have any helper? This one, the John was one Quran and servant of Abi Imam Hussein alayhi salam. But there was another servant of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. His name was Aslam. He was a very good reciter of Quran. He came to Imam and asked for permission. He went to the battlefield. After some time, Imam saw that he fell down, injured and wounded. Imam alayhi salam just rushed towards him. When he saw that he fell down, wounded, Imam alayhi salam hugged him. فَأَتَنَقَهُ الْإِمَامُ وَبَكَانَا And put his face and his cheek on the cheek of his servant. The servant of Imam opened his eyes and smiled and said, Man, who is like me and this grandson of Rasulullah is putting his cheek on my cheek. But there was another person that Imam Hussein put his cheek on his cheek. Ali al Akbar, when he called, Oh Father, Alayka min this salam, Hada Jaddi Rasulullah. Oh Father, this is Rasulullah. He gave me water of Jannah. He is waiting for you. What Imam Hussein did, he went to battlefield soon. He, he stopped there. He threw himself from horse top. 
and went towards Akiba. When he reached to Akiba, he put his cheek on the cheek of Ali and Akiba. He cried and, and called him several times, Waladi Ali, Waladi Qataluk, Mama Arafuk. Oh my son, they killed you because they didn't know you who you are. Qatal Allah, Qawman Qataluk, wa min shurb But he was very impatient at the end when there was no response from Ali al Akbar. He said, Ala dunya wa ala kalafa. May the dunya and this world be effaced from this land. May dunya and dust be on this dunya. Because, oh Ali, after, after you there is no value for this dunya. Ali bayn al manaya. My grandfather Rasulullah, Imam alayhi salam was the cheek was on the cheek of Ali al Akbar. Imam did not raise his head. Do you know when Imam raised his head? When he heard the sound of Bibi Zainab. When he heard the sound of Bibi Zainab calling Wa Ukhaya, Wa Una Ukhaya. Oh Ali, oh my brother and son of my brother. Imam Hussein alayhi salam was very sensitive to the sound of Bibi Zainab. He raised his, his head. He said, oh sister, why did you come to battlefield? Go back to tents. But what did Imam alayhi salam? He couldn't tolerate anything. He said, Ya Fityan Abani Hashim, Ta'alaw Ahmalu Naja Akhikum Ila Al-Fustan. Taste the body of Ali on the Akbar to the Tazit. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Abu Abdullah. Tabki ka aini la la atila masubati. La kibna ma.